Hey guys, Darko Cyclone FPV, and uh, we just got done doing the um, the, the Free Sky uh, uh, Apis uh, um, Mini Quad, right? The the I guess you call it a Whoop Quad or whatever you want to call it, the real small one there. Uh, this one right here, where is it? This one right here that we just got done building. Okay, so now we're doing the part where we're going to actually um, uh, work on the transmitter itself. So in this case, we're going to do the X9 Lite. That's kind of the kit that we did for the school. So we're going to use that in the video. And I'm also going to show you guys a trick. We're going to actually test it right now on uh, using these cards. I found these 64 gig SD cards really cheap. Uh, but the problem is the radios can't read 64 gigs. So I'm going to partition it down and show you guys how to do that in Windows. And hopefully by doing that, this should work, all right? So we're going to test this out as well. And then you'll be able to apply it to any radio. And pretty much this entire tutorial here on this radio is going to apply to any radio, especially ones that are new now that come with access preloaded, okay? So let me show you what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, split screen this. And we're going to do picture in picture with uh, Windows, with the computer being the main focus here, all right? Now, uh, I'm gonna show you right now that I'm gonna take this and this memory card here. I'm gonna put the memory card in. Now you can put it in any reader you want. I just happen to have a USB reader. I'm gonna plug this into the computer. Hang tight, let me put this in properly, there we go. All right, all right, so I've plugged it in here, right? And now it comes up with new volume, right? So the first thing I wanna do is, I know that the radios cannot read the 64 gig uh, memory stick. We've already tried this, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the control panel. So I'm gonna click start, run, type control, go there. I'm gonna go to administrative tools right here. I'm gonna go to computer management, double click it. And then I'm gonna go to disk management, right? And it's gonna load up all the hard drives that are loaded, including the ones like this. And now I've already deleted this, but what you wanna do is whatever comes in here, right? Whatever you see in volume D, which is your removable one, I want you to just go ahead and click delete volume, all right? And you're going to delete all the volumes. This one actually came with a small, a small piece loaded just uh, as the uh, boot record, and then the or the the file allocation table, and then uh, the rest of it was empty, right? So what you want to do is you want to sit here and you want to just right click on the drive and click to delete all the volumes, okay? To where you end up with the entire volume being unallocated. At that point, you want to go and click. Uh, right click on it and go click uh, new simple volume. You're going to get this screen here and click next. Now I'm going to do it at 16 gigs. So I'm going to do a 16,000. Okay. I have, I can go to 59,000, but I'm just going to do 16,000. All right. Which is a little uh, more than 16 gig actually. Um, but uh, we're just going to do this anyway. Click next. And the drives can actually, I believe, recognize 32 gig. But for right now, I'm just going to do 16 gig. Okay. I'm going to assign it a drive letter. It'll be E, whichever one's next. And I'm not going to mount the following folder. I'm just going to click Assign and Drive Letter E. And then I'm going to tell it to format in FAT32 and uh, default allocation size. And I'm just going to leave it as new volume right now. I can, I can label it uh, FR Sky if I want to, OK? Or uh, X9. Uh, I believe this would be fine if I did name it. I'm going to tell it to perform a quick format and click Next. All right, and then click Finished. And then what's going to happen is you're going to see this new partition created right here in just a second, OK? Right, so now it opens, there it is, X9 Lite right there, okay? And then that is going to be, if I close this down, you're gonna see here, X9 Lite, it's it's 15.63 gigs right now, okay? So with that being said, I'm gonna close down computer management. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open a brand new X9 Lite. We're gonna put that right here. So I'm gonna open a brand new X9 Lite and we're gonna get started for the students I know that are doing this and need to know how to set this up. All right, so let's go ahead and just get this open and get out of the box. All right, now the X9 lights come with access already loaded, okay? And what we wanna do, depending on the one that you got, you may have the firmware added to have um, the D16 options, or you may not. So we're gonna check and see first. So the first thing you wanna do is take your transmitter, you can get all this junk out of the way. Take your transmitter like this, and you're gonna to wanna to get, uh, go ahead and eject your memory card, because we're gonna need that. So let's right click on there. Click eject, and then let me go ahead now. I realize you guys can't see this screen, so let me go ahead and do this instead and do one, one, two, and three. There we go. Let's do it like that. Okay, so here's our X9, D, X9 Lite, right? And I'm taking the memory stick out right here, all right? And it, even though the memory stick says 64 gig, we've now taken it down to about 16. And let me get this brightness. I don't know what happened here, but there we go. All right, and uh, let's go ahead now and put that in this slot right here right in the middle. I believe it's going to be labeled down actually. It is. So make sure when you put it in there, you put with the pins up. Let's go ahead and put that in there. 
All right, so we got the power, I, I got the batteries charged now and are ready to get going with this. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we need to go ahead and check the radio out and make sure that we've updated the firmware on it and see what it comes with. So I'm gonna turn the radio on right now and see if the firmware's already preloaded on this or not. And you guys will be able to watch, see what I'm talking about, okay? So first thing is, let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, and we're gonna see uh, what we've got here. All right, just exit through all that. And we're gonna go to our, we're gonna hit page. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, menu, top button here. Then hit page and we're gonna scroll up and what I want to see is, I want to see right here under internal RF, uh, I want to see if when I try to change it, if I have D16. Okay, I don't. That means I need to do an update. So good option here is to go ahead and just plan on doing the update. So here's what you're going to do. First thing you're going to do is you're going to power it off. Okay. Now, on the computer, which you can see on the screen here, you're going to go ahead and you're going to go to the website right here, www.open-tx.org. Okay, and from there, you see where you've got this uh, companion and firmware and all that. What you're going to do is you're going to find the OpenTX 2.3.4, for example. You can click that one, okay, and we can go, actually, we can go to 2.3.5. Well, let's go to the newest one, 2.3.5, and when you click it, okay, you're going to scroll down, and you're going to download uh, the program. So right here, OpenTX 2.3.5 for Windows installer. You're going to click that and install it, or download it, and then you're going to install it. Now, I've already installed it, all right? So um, I've got it loaded on my system now. And so what happens once you're done install, once you're done running it and you install it, uh, you're going to get an icon like this one here that I have in the bottom corner here, right? And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to, actually, you know what, I'll just go ahead and install it again. We'll see what, it's probably going to prompt me to overwrite, but let's just go ahead and do it together anyway. Click I agree. Click next. It's going to ask me where I want it. I'm going to put it there and I'm going to click next, next, and I'm going to let it install. Okay. And then when it's finished, click next. Now we're going to tell it to open. So it's going to open right here. Okay. So you're going to see the companion load up. And the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the SD card contents. Okay. So you're going to click this next link right here, which is SD card. All right, and you're going to scroll through yours. Now, what we have is we have the X9 Lite, but you find the remote that you're using. I'm using the X9 Lite, so I'm going to click it. Hey, Sam's here. And then I'm going to find the newest version, which is uh, 2.3 uh, version 0025, which is the release date is 13th of December. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to download the SD card contents as well. All right, so let that download real quick, and then we can get going to the next, uh, next task. All right, I'm going to pause this video here so I can go help my wife who just got home, uh, carry some stuff in, and I'll be right back as soon as this download's done. All right, now that we've got our download done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, open our files here. So we're going to go to Show in Folder. I want to see it in my Downloads folder. And I'm going to copy this uh, zip file, and I'm going to go to my Transmitter folder, which I have somewhere here. There it is. My God. Right, I'm going to have to move this. So let me move this. I'm actually going to move my folder so I don't have to waste this much time again. So let me just click to cut and I'm going to put this in documents and I'm going to click paste here. All right, we're going to move the transmitter folder to here. All right, because that is too hard to find this. All right, so now that we're in transmitter, so I'm going to go back to my downloads and find this SD card, right, that I just downloaded and click copy. I'm going to go to now my transmitter folder here. Okay, and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to make a new folder called new, uh, I'm going to call it, I think, hopefully I don't have one already. So X9, X9 Lite uh, 2019-Customer. All right, so let's do that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the uh, downloaded uh, document here and click paste. And then I'm going to extract it. Okay, and I do want to see the files when they're done, so let's extract that real quick, because what we want to do now is we want to get rid of the huge file size that this is. And again, like if you've seen the other videos, the file size, the size of the file is because of the languages that are on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure to remove all the languages and, uh, and just keep English, right, for now. And that's going, to take, that's going to take this thing down from like 135 megs down to just 16 megs, all right, something like that, all right? Uh, so let's extract that real quickly. 
And then I'm going to show you what to do next. And we've got OPNT, OpenTX right here ready to go. So I'm going to show you how to do those steps. So just give it a second. Let's do, let's do this real quick. Okay. So these are the uh, contents of the folder. And what we want to do is we want to go to sounds. And we're just going to delete everything but English. All right. So just highlight them all and click delete. All right. And now, if you look at this folder, it's, it's very small, okay? And uh, the contents are very small. So under here, we're gonna keep this folder like it is because we want a backup of what we download in case we ever need it again. But we're gonna rename this folder here, the one that we extracted. So let's just go ahead and rename it to SD card, okay? And uh, that's gonna be the best way to handle this one. And so that, and you're gonna see why in just a second. So now with the, with, we're done here on the internet, so we can minimize that. Let's go ahead now and go to our OpenTX. And the first thing we want to do is we want to go to settings and we want to go to radio profile and we're going to create a new profile. So we're going to click, now don't worry about mine, just click add radio profile. And you're going to find your, right here, I'm going to put X9 Lite 2019 customer. All right. And from now on, I'm going to build off of this one. So that tells me it's an X9 Lite. So I need to find my X9 Lite right here. And this is not the S version, the special edition, but it's the regular X9 Lite. So we're going to click that. And our language is English, and we're going to tell it that I want to, I'll do uh, Lewis scripts, I want to do this new font, um, I'll put the Flex uh, uh, software on here, it is no heli, this is a, uh, a, uh, a quad, and I think that's pretty much going to be it, alright, so we're going to use these four options here, and that's actually going to go into the title of our firmware when we do it. Now, the SD structure path, that's the folder we just created, so go to select folder, and go to your new um, uh, transmitter folder that we created and here I called it X9 Lite 2019 it's right there and highlight SD card that's our path click select folder and for your backup folder go ahead and create a folder in here right in your you can see we're in the X line X9 Lite 2019 customer create a new folder and call it backup okay and so we're just gonna say backup okay and we're gonna highlight that and click select folder so that's our backup folder okay default channel order uh, we're going to use T-A-E-R, all right? And we can append the new version with the number and the file name. We're going to offer to write the firmware when we download it. We're going to do an automatic backup before we write any other firmware. And trust me, this is a good option here. And then we're going to go to our application settings. <clears throat> and then here's an automatic backup folder. Now, this one I'm going to also make it, uh, I'm just going to make a new folder again here and call it auto backup, okay? And I like to be very specific on these things. So auto backup, I'm going to click select. And let's see, what else do we want? Uh, we're gonna use stable releases, that's all we want. And uh, yeah, everything else is fine. So go ahead and we're gonna click enable automatic backup before writing firmware. Now we're gonna click okay, all right? Now, now that it's okay, if you if you look here, you're gonna see the Fry Sky Trainers X9 Lite profile, X9 Lite, that's what you want to make sure at the top of the screen here, that's what you wanna make sure that you have everything set right, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this download arrow right here. And we're going to have it check for firmware. Check for updates. Okay. No updates are available. And then we're going to say download firmware. All right. And this is the firmware that we want. So what I'm going to tell you is when we download the firmware, and I have not plugged in my radio yet, by the way. When we download the firmware, we're going to go to our SD card folder. We're going to go to our firmware folder. And I want you to make a new folder in here and just keep it simple and call it because this is, this is OpenTX, right? So we're going to call it uh, Open. TX FW. Okay? That's that whoops, I spelled that out. Open TX FW. That stands for Open TX firmware because there's free sky firmware that you'll download from Radio 2. Keep everything separate, okay? So we're gonna click OK on that one. We're gonna enter. And now this is a very long file name, and sometimes the radio won't read it. So let's go ahead and just minimize this. And we're gonna just say that it's open TX X Lite. Well, we, if you've got the X Lite, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna minimize it just to the version right here, okay? 2.3.5, all right, I'm gonna click save. It's gonna put it in my firmware folder. Let me close this door real quick. Okay. And now once it's saved, it's gonna ask if I wanna write this to the radio. And I'm gonna click yes. So, oh wait, I haven't, I haven't put the radio in yet. Hold on, my apologies. So now, before I do that, I, could, I guess I could've clicked no. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my radio ready. And to do that, I'm gonna get my USB cable. 
And like I was trying to do earlier before I put the batteries in is you're going to hold these two sliders in and press the power button real quick and then let go. And you're going to get to this screen right here, okay? And if you can read that, the screen tells you we have bootloader 2.3.0 and we are we can either write the firmware, restore the EEPROM or exit. But once we plug our USB cable in at this point, we now are connected in DFU mode to the computer and it will now see our radio. But we're going to wait a minute because it's going to open up the SD card folder. It's going to open up a few things. So give it a second and you should start seeing screens pop up here. All right, let me just make sure. Got everything. Yeah, it's going to give you just a second. All right. Okay, it's, it's got, we'll wait just a minute. Let me make sure we got the drivers loaded as well. Okay, so here go the folders. It just takes a little while for them to populate, but they're there, okay? So uh, we've got these folders here. This is an empty folder of our SD card, but we're, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So now we're gonna tell it to go ahead and write, all right? And it's gonna write from our SD card firmware, OpenTX, that's the file, and we're gonna click write to TX, okay? And there it goes. It just wrote, and it's writing right now, and it's almost 100% done, okay? Just give it a second. Click close. Now, you see this button here? This is to check for updates as well. This is to synchronize the SD card. So we have our SD card folder that we created and we have an SD card in here. What we wanna do is we wanna keep these things synchronized with each other. So whatever we have in our folder on the computer goes to the radio and vice versa, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click this button next and it's telling me, okay, in my transmitters X9 Lite 2019 SD card, that's the folder we created. And now I need to tell it the radio folder. So I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna go down and find my uh, X9 Lite right here that I created. That's the that's the SD card that we formatted, okay? I'm gonna click Select Folder. And now I'm gonna tell it, I wanna copy both directions, and I wanna use only the newer one when you compare them. And I'm gonna say Go, Start. And you're gonna see this thing start sending files back and forth. And it tells you right here, there's a total of 284 files. So we're gonna let this write, and eventually it's gonna synchronize both of these, and we're gonna be set, okay? So give it a second, and it'll tell you here how many it created how many were uh, updated, how many were skipped, and how many errors. You're hoping that there are no errors, right? That's what we're looking for. So let's give it a second here to run. Okay, so now it's done synchronizing, right? So let's just, let's just do it again. Now, now that we did it, let's go ahead and click start again, right? And we're just gonna let it run through, boom. You see how fast it is once you've done it, all the files have been copied. Now if you change one file, it'll just copy that one file over, right? So we're gonna click close. So we know now we know all the files are on here, okay? <clears throat> what we need to do now is we've updated the firmware on the radio. Now what that's gonna do, it's gonna give us the D16 options on here. So the safe thing to do now is to go ahead and find your USB, uh, you know, your, uh, um, your USB devices here, click on it and just start ejecting uh, the uh, radio because you don't want to just uh, pull the cord out because you could uh, cause damage to the radio So eject them both when you get confirmation. It's good. Go ahead and remove this and Now you can click right firmware, but nothing's going to show up on the screen here. So when you click exit just scroll down to exit Okay, and it's going to tell you have bad EEPROM data. That's fine. Press the key It's going to format the EEPROM and it's going to update it properly Welcome to match to Now all of a sudden your radio is talking you've got your card in there and we're gonna go ahead and select our model type, right? So we're gonna say multi for multi-rotor. <clears throat> and we're gonna say channel three is gonna be throttle, okay? And then just go ahead and click page. Channel one is roll, channel two is pitch, and channel four, channel four is yaw, okay? So click page, assign. Now it's telling you what to assign, arming and all this. You can go ahead and click page and you can use that auxiliary three. And then we're gonna do beeper auxiliary two. That's fine, just keep clicking page, and when you're good with it, press this and hold it for a while to confirm, and now it wants you to calibrate, right? So what we're gonna do for calibrating is, we're gonna put our sticks uh, in the center, it says set sticks at midpoint, and we're gonna turn our dial here to the center, right here, all right? Everything's in the center now, and we're gonna tell it, it says press enter when done. So we're gonna press enter. Now it's gonna say move the sticks. So what you're gonna do is simple. You're gonna go left, up corner, right corner, down right corner, down left corner, and just do that a couple times. But do not do this hard. Don't push harder than you normally would when you're flying, or else you're gonna be setting the zero and the, the, the max and mins off, okay? So just go around a couple times, all right? Then you can go left to right, up and down, and do the same on this side, okay? Go back the other way, all right? And then go left to right, 
up and down, left to right, okay? Then turn your dial here all the way one way, all the way the other way, and then set it back to the middle. And when you're done, click that to enter. Perfect, everything is now configured and calibrated, okay? So now we've got model one. Now watch what happens when we hit menu and we, 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 we wanna go now and update the bootloader, right? So that's the one thing we haven't updated yet. So you wanna go to your menus and go to your firmware. So we're gonna hold the menu page down. Okay, now you could set your date here. Today is, the year is 2020, so let's go to 2020. Uh, the month is February, whoops. So let's go to February. All right, and the date is uh, the 25th. All right, it is currently 1241. There, all right. Now we scroll down and we can see all the other options that we want, uh, low voltage warning uh, and so forth, okay? Um, and you can adjust your screen here, the, the brightness and so forth. Okay, <clears throat> so this is, we are not a mode one, we are mode two, so we wanna go ahead and click mode two. Throttle warning. Okay, that's here, all right? And then we're gonna click exit, all right? And then we're gonna go over now and we wanna go and update the bootloader, right? So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna hold the menu button down, click page, go to firmware, go to OpenTX firmware, and I'm, I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna hold the enter button down, I wanna flash the bootloader here. Okay, so here it goes, it's right in the bootloader. Now I'm gonna power it off. Okay, and when I power it back on, actually, watch this. You're gonna see now a new bootloader has been updated to 2.3.5, right there at the top, okay? So with that done, I'm gonna hit exit. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay, don't Switch worry about warning. these warnings right now. All right, so now that that's done, there is another update that we need to get, uh, we need to have installed here. And so we're gonna go ahead and we can actually turn the, uh, we're gonna turn the radio off. And we're gonna put it back in DFU mode. So go ahead and hold those sideways in, press the power button real quickly, plug in your, um, plug in your USB cable. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the FreeSky website, which I think we also have this on ours, but let me go to the FreeSky website here. So we're gonna go to www.frsky-rc.com, hit enter. And I will have these on our link too, which I believe we've got some of these already downloaded. If we go to our webpage, and I'll show you uh, here shortly. So we're going to go to downloads here, but it's really good to get used to doing this because you need to start checking your own updates every once in a while. All right, so we're going to go to the, we're going to find the X9 Lite, which is right here, okay? And we want to look at firmware. Now, there is a firmware update that came out right here, all right? And this is what we need to get. Uh, we need to load this as well. This is something that was not loaded uh, just now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click download on this ISRM, so download that, okay? And it's gonna be a pretty short download. It's gonna say, and then you're gonna to go to show in folder, right click on that and then copy it and left click in your uh, transmitters folder, find your X9 Lite, like here, the customer one, and paste it here like you did your SD card contents, okay? Go ahead and extract it, and you can have it to show the files. So there's your files right there. Now this is the X9 Lite software from FreeSky, the update for it, for the internal module. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna right click on this folder and click copy, and then go back to your, remember your SD card folder here? Go to your firmware and now make a new folder here and call it uh, FR, uh, FRSKY dash. Now we have transmitters and receivers. This is going to be the transmitter, so we're going to put TX firmware. Okay? And this is how we keep things organized. And then here, we're going to click paste. And that is the folder that we just got, right? That's our update that we got. All right? So that's in our new firmware folder. And now we want to synchronize. Now there's faster ways to do this, but I'm trying to show you the way that I would do it to keep things consistent. So back in your OpenTX file, click that SD card synchronize now and watch what happens. There's one, there's creations here, you see? It's gotta create, it's skipping all the other ones, but it is gonna create these uh, folders that we just put in for firmware. So watch what happens here. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna click close. And now let's go ahead and um, find our USB icon, where it's somewhere here. Okay, and go ahead and eject the first one. 
and then do it again for the next one. Now it is safe to go ahead and pull this cable out and you can scroll down to exit and, oops, nope. Go down to exit. Welcome there you go. to OpenTX. Okay. Switch warning. Okay, there we go. Okay. So at this point, what we want to do is we're going to hold the menu button down, click page once, go to our firmware, go to our FrySky, FRSky firmware right here, TXFW, click that, go to our new folder that we found, click that, and then hold your click and hold on the next file. Now be careful here, do not do flash export and do not do flash external module. You want to flash the internal module, okay? So hold that down and then let go and it's going to reset the device and start updating it. So give it a second because it's a long update, okay? Okay. All right. Now that then that, that is a long update, guys. So I mean, just be prepared for. It. So now that it's done, we're going to click OK. It's done. Hit exit. Go ahead and power off your radio at this point. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get ready and we're going to power on the radio. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay. And let's see. We want to go ahead and bind, right? So let's just go ahead and bind here. We're going to go to menu. We're going to go to page, and we're going to go back to our Make sure we have ACC D16 selected in our internal, and we have channel 1 through 16 here. All right, so now again, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this in bind mode. So to do that, get your battery ready to plug in. All right, just kind of line it up. Hold the button down, the bind button on the, on the uh, quad. Okay, and actually, we don't need three screens now, so let's do, uh, let's do this. Let's go back to this and do this and this. All right, because that's really all we need now. We don't need the computer screen for this point. So hold the button down, right? Keep it pressed. And there we go, plug in the battery. And again, we're going to see that we have a solid green light here. We, I know it's hard to see, but there's a solid green and a solid red. And then we're going to go ahead, and I'm just going to try a different option here. I'm going to tell it to bind, but I'm going to tell it to do eight channel 8, 1 through 8 telemetry off. And now, as you can see, the red light is blinking. So we needed to do that update. So once it starts blinking, that means it's bound now. Just go ahead and hit the enter button again, then hit exit to get back to your main screen. Now, unplug your battery, plug it back in, and the red light will disappear. And now you have just a green light right there. And you are good to go and ready to fly, okay? All right, so this part completes the binding process and actually setting up the radio and doing all of that. The good news is the formatting the uh, SD card works, so 64 gig cards can work if you partition them smaller. Uh, we did get the firmware update. One thing that I did uh, initially forget to do was check to see about that one update that is um, uh, for the radio for the internal module. I will show you something real quickly here. So let me, um, let me do this real quick. So on the website that we have, uh, let me open our website real quickly. Go to Cyclone FPV. I will, uh, under our radio, if you go to our tutorials and all that, okay, and you'll find this under the, um, under the quad page as well for this one, but under tutorials, uh, you will see a, a link here for, uh, let me see, FR Sky updates, downloads, and firmware tutorials. I will have for the uh, X Lite. Uh, right here. I will have the X9 Lite updates here as well, and I'll give you a link on our page. So check under tutorials, and you'll probably see a section here. Uh, you'll see an article written, sorry, uh, where is it? Under tutorials here, you'll see it. And then if you were to actually go to the X9 Lite, X9 Lite, uh, and you go to the radio itself, which is right here, okay, um, you will start seeing, there will be a section here under uh, video instructions and tutorials. I will update with this video so that you can um, uh, follow along and do these new updates, okay? So either way, guys, you won't be stuck out with that one. You can follow these, and you'll have links to download these files so you don't have to go to Free Sky's website or anybody else's website, all right? Okay, outside of that, guys, the next video is going to be setting up on Betaflight, so that's going to be video three, and then this series will be done. If you have any questions, email me at targetcyclonefpv.com. Also, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps uh, give us some support. And other than that, God bless. Spend time with your family, guys. You never know how much time you have left, so make the most of it. You can always fly drones later. Other than that, say fly. God bless. Talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>